So, as we are working through the neutrophils function, now let us very quickly see that various pathologies and again this is not the pathology of immunology. What we will do is that at the end of the immunology we will do a full uh, session on the pathologies related to immunology. But I do want to as we are talking about the neutrophil I do want to talk about what are the various diseases which are attached to the problem with the function of the neutrophil. So, let us start from here. The very first set of diseases are called leukocyte adhesion defects. So, it is leukocyte not just a neutrophil it could be eosinophil, basophil and, and monocytes. Leukocyte adhesion defects there are two types in there we have LAD1 and we have LAD2. It is very simple the leukocyte adhesion defect 1 what that has is that remember integrins. So, if I pick up this thing So, we have integrin here right this integrin binds with the leukocyte remember. So, what were these integrins remember this was ICAM 1 or it could be VCAM 1 and ICAM 1 was working with the LFA or MAC and the VCAM 1 was binding with the um, very late antigen or VLA 4. So, this is integrin if there is a problem with the integrin molecule. So, let us say this is integrin molecules it is a heterodimer right. So, it has CD18 and CD11 sometimes CD18 molecule is defective CD18 molecule is defective. So, adhesion of the leukocyte this process of stopping the fighter jet does not work. So, if you go to YouTube and you see you know the landing on the ships naval ships you sometimes see that the the fighter jet comes on the runway, but cannot engage with the proper hooks to stop and just keeps going and goes out. This is the same thing the landing and adhesion hooks which would stop it these hooks are defective. So, they cannot engage. So, when they cannot engage leukocyte comes in there slows down selectins slow it down stasis slows it down, but it cannot create adhesion it cannot stop there. So, it would keep going. So, of course, that means this neutrophil which had to come into the tissue to do its function that neutrophil is not there. So, that is one. So, that is called leukocyte adhesion deficiency type 1. Then we have leukocyte adhesion deficiency type 2. Type 2 is related to slowing down and rolling. What that means is remember we talked about it that leukocytes carry a candy with them right. Leukocyte carry a candy what was that? That was Cialy Lewis X modified sugar that was the selectin present on the surface of the leukocyte and then there are selectins present on the surface of endothelium which engage together to cause the slowing down of the fighter jet of the neutrophil right. So, here this oligosaccharide which is present the selectin which is present on the leukocyte surface which is also called L selectin right. It is also is C D 62 L or it is cellyl X Lewis cellyl Lewis X modified protein or an oligosaccharide glycoprotein this formation is is not correct. So, the fucosyl enzyme which is needed for the formation of this is not there. So, due to the deficiency of that enzyme oligosaccharides are not produced they are not protruded on the surface of the neutrophil. So, what would be this type of deficiency think about it this is selectin problem selectins are used for selectins are used for rolling slowing down. So, here the fighter jet comes, but it cannot slow down enough to actually land it just keeps going. So, selectin is the problem is the leukocyte adhesion defect type 2 ok. So, let us say leukocyte does not have a problem of this type it can actually come into the system and do the function then we have couple of diseases which are related to the internal function of the leukocyte. So, let us talk about those first one is so keep this in mind look at this picture keep this picture in mind what have we established here is 
we have a phagosome and we have a lysosome and they have fused. So, what we are going to see now is how does that happen. So, as we talked before inside the cell we have these phagosomes and lysosomes sitting on microtubules and then they are moved on these microtubule by motor proteins. There are proteins in there and there are pathways in the cell. It is not just simple fluid in which everything is floating around and swimming. There is these are microtubular systems in here. So, the disease which we are talking about is Shadiac, I do not know the right pronunciation, Hagashi syndrome. In this syndrome, the microtubular system is defective. So, the transport or trafficking of the substances on the microtubules is not correct. So, what happens is bacteria is sitting here and he is really happy, this time this is going to win. So, this is a really happy bacteria sitting in there in the hot tub, jacuzzi having fun and here are lysosomal monsters. Remember this twin monster superoxides, two oxygens really bad and remember that two hydrogen, two oxygen, H2O2 twin monster and HOCl the bleach the biggest monster. So, let me make that biggest monster. These monsters are all sitting here they are looking at this guy, they, they know they can go and destroy it, but the microtubular trafficking system is not working correctly, they cannot go there. Unfortunately, they are there, they cannot go and act. So, what is going to happen? This bacteria is just going to sit there and have fun, right? So, that is a Shadiak Higashi syndrome. Then, one more disease, which is very funny. So, whenever I, uh, I talk about what happened, think about what happened in there, I kind of find it interesting, but of course, it is a very dangerous disease and people usually have life threatening infections with that. So, that is the chronic granulomatous disease and what is the function in what, what happens in that is, so this is chronic granulomatous disease. So, what happens in this is, that remember we needed NAD, NADPH oxidase for oxygen to be converted into this oxygen twin monster, remember O2 negative. This enzyme is not available or defective. So, this reactive oxygen species is not formed. Now, for the remaining parts remember we have oxygen superoxide, we have hydrogen peroxide and we have bleach or HOCl. All of those are actually next steps from this first step. So, NADPH then we have SOD superoxide dismutase, we talked about it in this lecture previously, so I do not want to uh, continue repeating it, but this would cause H2O2 and then we have myeloperoxidase which would cause HOCl, which will form HOCl. These are all reactive oxygen species dangerous things, but when this first enzyme is deficient, the very first thing is not formed and this is a substrate for the next step and this is a substrate for the next step. So, nothing happens, we do not have reactive oxygen species inside the neutrophil, they cannot kill the pathogens, but here is a here is a very interesting thing, very interesting thing. So, remember that um, nitro blue uh, tetrazoleum test that this is called oxygen burst inside the inside the neutrophil this process of creating the reactive oxygen species is called an oxygen burst and frankly it is so funny those halogenated systems bleach when that acts with so the oxygen when it acts and takes or gives the electron there is a little light produced. So, there is a little flame. So, this is really that that grill which we talked in the beginning that they have their own grill which they use to grill the bacteria and pathogens. Now, we do not have the superoxide available, so the remaining things are not going to be produced. So, how do we handle that? Most of the living organisms produce H2O2, 
most of the living organisms produced H2O2 including the bacteria. So, it is so funny. So, the neutrophil is really unhappy, he is sad. Why is it sad? Because it does not have the NADPH oxidase or it does not have the enzymes to make this the reactive oxygen species. Here comes the little bacteria and bacteria asks the neutrophil and he says, hey neutrophil why are you sad? And the neutrophil says, I am sad because I cannot make H2O2 and the bacteria says, hey do not worry about that, I make H2O2. So, the bacteria make because most of the living things make H2O2. So, bacteria says, okay here you go, here is your H2O2. So, bacteria offers the H2O2. Now, what happens? Remember the lysosome which comes in? If the remaining enzymes are present, that means if the myeloperoxidase is present, it is going to pick up this H2O2 from the bacteria and convert that into hypochlorite or bleach and kill this bacteria. So, inadvertently bacteria took part in its own killing. So, in this situation such bacteria which produce H2O2 will be killed if NADPH is damaged, but the remaining enzymes are there. Some bacteria are a little clever. What they do is they know what is going to happen to them if they offer H2O2. So, they also produce catalase. Remember staphylococci, they have catalase enzyme. The catalase functions on the H2O2 and breaks it into water, right. So, now the bacteria says, hey what do you want, why are you so sad neutrophil and the neutrophil says, well I do not have H2O2. Neutrophil does not tell him that why does it need the H2O2. Bacteria says, okay here I can give you an H2O2, but it says I think it is going to become even better bubble bath if I give you this catalase too. So, when these two things are given to the neutrophil, the catalase breaks the H2O2 and the end result is neutrophil ends up with water instead of the um, bleach. So, catalase positive bacteria would survive in chronic granulomatous disease, but catalase negative bacteria producing H2O2 can become destroyed. Now, why do we call it chronic granulomatous disease? The reason for that is that when the neutrophil are not able to kill the bacteria, those bacteria are now going to be handled by the macrophages. In macrophage, remember the difference between macrophage function and the neutrophilic function is neutrophil are pyogenic defenders. They produce pus when they are defending us. Macrophages are granulomatous defenders. They produce big granulomas when they are defending us. So, now neutrophils are doing less defense and macrophages are doing more defense. So, the end of the day we would end up with the granulomas. So, that is called chronic granulomatous disease. Okay, thank you.